a patent has been put in place by Apple for a sensor that has 20 stops of dynamic range. Now, look, I'm not here to talk about an iPhone. I don't really care about that. I mean, it's cool that it would go on an iPhone. Yeah, that's neat. What I'm interested in is does this, is, are they ever gonna make a standalone camera? Because I have talked about this with friends for a long time, never really mentioned it on the channel, but if Apple made a standalone camera, where they actually gave some size to the thing so the sensor could be larger, where they could actually give some physical controls to it in combination with their software. I mean, look, here's the amazing thing about what an Apple image produces out of the iPhone, which I'm not saying is as good as my Canon R5C or my Red Epic Dragon. I'm not saying that you can do side by side comparisons. And look, the bottom line is you blow it up, you do see differences. It's not as good. But if you had a dedicated camera where you were allowed to unleash a larger sensor size and actual controls and put all that software in there and pursue it for that purpose, I mean, what could Apple do? What would that camera be capable of, especially with the pursuit of AI? Like this, it would be the camera that could actually maybe have real AI in it. Now, Apple has been failing on the front of AI, I agree. But I do think that they are way closer to actually having AI. They have way more pressure on them to get this AI thing working synergistically with their phone than any camera manufacturer has the pressure on for. So if they get the AI, they get the software and they put it all into a standalone camera, how capable would that camera be? Imagine if they went all the way. In a world where nuclear war has begun, vampires fought back in super real 3D. Honestly, when you go look at cameras and you're looking to purchase, at this point, because of the image quality and how good it is, a lot of the question marks that you're putting on it is what is it capable of doing for you, in particular as a one-man band, oftentimes many of us are, you know, what are the auto features that it can do and how well does it do them? Because the image quality is getting, you know, it's edging out. The most we can really pursue, you know, is better dynamic range. I mean, we're all chasing that. Now, an Ari Alexa is around 17 stops of dynamic range. You know, I have a Red Epic Dragon. I can put it into an HDR X mode and it can achieve 20 stops of dynamic range already. But it is extremely limited. It has to do it as two separate images. I have to stitch it together. One of the problems with all these modes with HDR like that is that there's motion blur issues. But with Apple's technology, I mean, maybe they could solve that in-house in the camera. Now, this sensor is not just about it being 20 stops. It's also got some really unique groundbreaking concepts happening to the sensor technology. Now, if you look here, they've got this thing that they're inventing called LOFIC, LOFIC lateral overflow integration capacitor. And what does this actually do? We're talking about actual sensor technology, not just, I know I'm talking so much about the software, but this is an actual sensor technology here. At a basic level, Apple's patent is for a stacked image sensor that can store different levels of light across each pixel, allowing different photo diodes to be more or less charged based on the scene's brightness. So if a pixel needs to be more sensitive to the light, level striking it, it could be while another can remain less sensitive to avoid blowing out if it is stuck, struck with more light. All right, and on top of that, without reading everything here, it can also individually handle noise suppression for each individual pixel in real time on the sensor before it leaves out as data. So that, that's crazy. If they even are making this, I don't know. This is a patent for something, all right? But according to Jacob Owens on his YouTube channel, which was where I first came across that this was even happening, and other people have reported on it, but that's where I found it. He seems to have a buddy. I don't know Jacob Owens. Hey, buddy, how's it going? I don't know you. I don't, I, but you, you seem like a genuine fella. I believe that you actually know somebody that's working at Apple, which is, you know, kind of gave you more reason and confidence to make the video that you did talking about that this is potentially, like this is actually being worked on. Imagine an AI, a real, a good AI assistance built into the camera that really understood what you were trying to get to focus on. I mean, imagine you could just tell it we're focusing on cars right now, you know, specifically the red sports car. For me, this would be huge. Or you could tell it to latch on to a specific person. You could assign it to do things and it could shift focus and you could assign 
tell it to do it as a gradual focus. You know, let's try and avoid it feeling like this. You know, I want it to feel as natural as possible. And they'd get this stuff down. I mean, this is inevitably going to happen. This is inevitably going to happen. But in a camera, like Canon's not close to AI, really. Red's not. Sony's not. I mean, Sony might have the next best shot at it to some extent because they're involved in so many other products. As far as camera brands go, Ari's not. Ari, whatever you want to say. But Apple is already on the path. They have so much pressure on them. Apple has been one of the mag seven companies to have for the stock market. And it's it's just kind of, they haven't really offered something that's really innovative for a while. Closest thing is the Vision Pro. And as far as I understand it, that is not doing that well. You might say that this sensor is just for that. Well, I'm sure they're going to use it for that. Once they have this technology, what all will they put it into? And I would say there's probably only a 10% chance, maybe 5% chance that they would make a dedicated standalone Cine camera. But I could only imagine the possibilities if they did. Now, if they did do it, they would immediately be able to get credibility with it because they have Apple TV. And Apple TV is producing some really great productions. They could put that camera immediately into the deep end, make some legitimately great stuff, and then you'd say it's associated with, you know, the same camera that filmed this or the same sensor that filmed that. I'll tell you this, you know, I have newer Canon R5 season. I've got an old Red Epic Dragon. All of them produce great images. Do you know what impresses my clients? It is when I tell them what camera we're going to be using. It's not when I say I'm going to use Canon R5Cs. It, and it's not really even when I say it's a red because of my situation, because I'm not in some big city where people are like seeking out red cameras and they want, they're not even asking what camera. What I say that floats their skirt up is that it's the same camera that they used to film The Hobbit. And their eyes go like, what? Really? Wow, we're using that same camera. That's an old ass movie. And then I say, actually, it's the camera model that came out after the one that they used to shoot The Hobbit. Because The Hobbit, at least the first one, was filmed with the Mysterium X sensor, as far as I understand it. And I've got the Dragon 6K sensor in mind, right? I'm like, whoa. I don't mention that it's not, we're not using fifty and $80,000 lenses. But, hey, it's still, hey, this is the same camera. Oh, it's even better. The biggest names in Hollywood are doing Apple movies. They could make some fantastic looking movies. And then you'd be able to say that this is the same camera sensor that filmed these recent amazing movies with blank actor, you know, and it does add credibility to the gear that you're using when you're with a client. So it'd be impressive. Now that's just name appeal. I'm just pointing out like why it would be in their interest. You know, it's of interest for companies to have flagship models that are associated with, you know, the most pristine things. And then it makes anything that they sell under that umbrella seem like it's of a higher quality because it's derived from the same technology. And in association with some of those auto features, think about the ecosystem that Apple devices are already at. Now, I don't have an Apple Watch. I've never really cared about an Apple Watch. I do have AirPods. I like those a lot. But you got the phone, you got the AirPods. And if it was synergistically working with the camera, I mean, think about the remote control options that you could have. And you might say, well, there's already apps for cameras and you can kind of do that. But just, yes, yes. But surely we could unlock some insane concepts, doing things that we've never even thought about doing for wireless communication and control. If you had that seamlessly tied into the ecosystem, you're like talking on your earbuds, telling the AI to do something that you needed to do from a distance while you're watching a monitor at some place. And like, it's just, I mean, <laughs> I know, I like filming. Don't get me wrong. I like holding a camera. I still want to hold this camera. But there are concepts that you could unlock of shots that are just not achievable by hand if you were able to take advantage of the communication and wireless control and, and seamless integration of that ecosystem of all devices in conjunction with your camera or multiple cameras, you know? Like, surely these things would work the most synergistically versus using an app designed by a camera company that you can start, stop, record, and just control aperture and maybe you can pull, you know, choose focus and change ISO. These are basic ideas. I think we're thinking only in the parameters of features that exist now. I'm thinking, what kind of features could it really unlock? And they would be the innovators of the camera meets AI 
technology for all these auto features. And you could say, I don't want to use auto features, but in particular, if you're one man band, you know, auto features really can save the day. And they are still, to be honest, in comparison to where they will be one day with AI, you know, they're archaic. These are kind of archaic versions of <laughs> this is we're going to look at these as like the first implementations of auto features and think that they're extremely weak compared to the ability to communicate with an AI that could actually understand what the hell you're asking it to do and keep track of very specific things and perform specific tasks and do it in a you know realistic well-crafted way for rack focuses and such if apple pursued it they'd be the ones that would win in that department that would just put them leaps and bounds like years ahead of any competition from the other manufacturers in regards to that let me know your thoughts would you be interested if they made an apple camera take care guys and i will catch you on the next one peace movie voice